Welcome, man of God. How are you? This is Pastor John Michael um, from Trinity Church Man Up Men's Ministry. Uh, we wanted to start doing something uh, online on our Facebook page um, on the Trinity Church social media. Uh, we just had an idea to do this real talk um, kind of a show um, where we're going to have a couple of guys we're going to interview. Every, every time we do this, we're going to have men of God that we're going to interview, we'll be talking to them about things that apply to men. Um, they'll, they may apply to other, to women as well, but, but things that are, that are, that are male centric, that are things that are going to help us to become the man of God we've been called to be. Um, every week we'll have a, every, every episode we'll have a special guest. And, uh, so I just want to welcome you to that. Uh, you should be t- tuning in because we're gonna have some really cool guests. Uh, this week we have our first guest and he is a personal friend of mine. I've known him for years and years and years. He is the, um, the leader of a, a ministry out of Trinity church called men of redemption. Uh, let me welcome, uh, to the chat. This is Ernie Chambers. How hey. you doing there, Ernie? Hey, how you doing, John? Good, good. Good to see you. Where are you at today? I'm, I'm at home, right in my office. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, Ernie. What, what do you do for a living? Where, or, where, ah, well, where do you work? Uh, first and foremost, I'm a man of God. Uh, there you go. I live in uh, Lancaster, Texas. I work at Costco here in Duncanville. And I uh, just love what I do. I've been there for almost 14 years now. And uh, a lot of my time is spent... Uh, working with the guys on Monday nights and we're working on Monday nights, but uh, that was our forte on Monday nights for about 11 years. Well, what, okay. So we got your alter ego. Now what's your superhero? What, what's your, well, what's your ministry thing? What do you do for ministry? Explain oh, that a little bit about you say, working oh, with okay. men. Well, you know, in these times that we live in, uh, you know, men struggle with some sexual integrity issues. Uh, they go back as far as their youth, adolescence, and it's manifested itself now in their adult years. And so what we do is we help men identify those, those traits and those uh, stigmas. And what we do is we put things in place and help them identify those things and uh, put structure in men's lives so that they can live a life of wholeness and purity. Very cool. What's, and what's that ministry called again? Remind us. Men of Redemption. Okay. Very good. And, and Men of Redemption, uh, again, during normal times, I'm setting my timer here. Uh, during normal times, when would Men of Redemption meet? Mondays from 6.30 to 8.30. Okay. In the Heritage um, Center. Okay. In the Heritage Center at Trinity Church in Cedar Hill. Yes, sir. Um, so if people are, are interested in, um, in being part of that ministry, how would they, like norm, normally, how would they go about doing that? Normally, they would contact me personally. I would advise that because we need to know where they're at as far as their recovery and their issues are concerned. And then we have an orientation twice a year. So that will take place. And after my conversation, they will be invited and uh, we'll process that. Okay. So, so what does a Monday night normally look like for, for just, I'm just trying to get a little background on you. What does a Monday night normally look like when you guys meet? Just, just a quick overview. Guys show up at 6.30. We try to encourage everybody to get there on time. Uh, we go through a check-in. We do a heart check, find out where everybody is heart-wise. And then we get into our curriculum. We have three components of our curriculum and uh, commitment to change, faster skill, and the homework. Uh, that takes about, 45, about an hour and 45 minutes to complete. After that, we dismiss the guys and uh, everything that we talked about and everything that we shared that night, they put into practice for the next six days. Okay. Very good. So, um, all right. So that's obviously in the last month, uh, last four to five weeks mm-hmm. that hasn't happened on a consistent basis. Um, so how, let me ask you this. Are, are you guys doing anything during this time to stay together, to stay connected? We are, we are, we have, uh, submitted ourselves to online groups, which is going very, very well. We thought the transition might be a bit hectic, but the guys just transitioned into it really, really well. And I think most of them enjoy it because a lot of the guys are opening up a lot more. The transparency is is very visible and uh, it just makes the whole atmosphere of the group activities that more vulnerable. So they're very happy. Yeah. Yeah. So like small groups, actually smaller the group, sometimes the more, Open and, and, and more intimate. Yeah, for yes, sure. Sir. Very cool. Okay. So let me ask you a couple of questions that are unique to this time. Um, first of all, let me, let me ask. Okay. So men are at this point, not everyone is working. I know some are going to work pretty consistently. Um, that's a blessing. And a lot of people are working from home. But one of the things that I do know is happening is that more people are more and more on their computers 
in their social media stuff. They're, they have more screen time or more time uh, than they probably even normally would on a regular basis. How, how is that isolation? Um, how do you think that affects, first of all, how do you think that affects someone who deals with sexual integrity issues? How does that, uh, how does that work with somebody who, who struggles and, and let me, let me be clear, all of us on some level struggle with the lust, with the lust yes. issue. Um, so I'm not trying to isolate, but people that are, that have recognized it, that have identified it in their lives and their, um, how does that, how does that affect these guys? It's, it's very us, difficult. Us, period. It's very difficult for men who are struggling in those areas. One of the things that we try to encourage them to do is just because we are isolated from one another physically doesn't mean that we cannot implement the same applications away from one another. One of the things that we do encourage the guys to do is to reach out and call one another. If we're close by, we can uh, just drive by, just, just wave, make contact, let them know, hey, I'm driving by your house. I just want to reach out and say hi. Uh, things that you can do that are tangible and, 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 and relatable, we try to encourage that. Um, a lot of guys are, are into their workbooks. They're into uh, additional recovery material, reading. Uh, but most importantly, from the isolated perspective, we try to encourage the guys to just pick up that phone because you got time. And we, we require three calls a week, but some of the guys and what they're going through require maybe more communication on that area. So we encourage sure. that as well. Yeah. Okay. So, so again, I know, I know, and I, and I, I try to tell guys all the time that one of the key tools of the enemy is isolation. He loves to pull guys apart and separate them. Mm -hmm. um, does this, and again, I kind of know the answer to this. Does this time, or is it easier to isolate yourself, to pull away to, um, because you've got, because you're at home with family or you're home and a lot of guys not home without kids. And you just, um, does that tactic be become doubly effective with the enemy when, when there's, when you're not able to go out and do the normal day-to-day -day things? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. You know, there are guys who, who are struggling now who, who uh, basically, when you throw isolation into the game, they look at an opportunity who are really struggling, an opportunity where nobody can see you. I'm, I'm by myself. You know, I can do this and nobody can you know, pick it up. But yeah. the most important thing is we have uh, uh, something in our group that we call software. And that software is connected to all of their devices, computer, laptops, iPads, you name it. Uh, so if they're doing anything that they don't have any business doing, their group leaders are notified, I'm notified, and anybody that's connected as accountability partner is notified. We can call them up on it. We can make sure that whatever they're doing, we can question them. So there are some parameters involved in this isolation. But yes, your, the answer to your question is yes, it's, it's very highlighted. So. Yeah. Um, so like, so again, just a couple of things to help because like I said earlier, we all would like to, and this is part of the enemy's tactic is to say, well, those guys struggle with that. But the truth of the matter is that any one of us, because of the way we're, we're because of the way we're wired, because of our society that we're in, there's so much access and there's so much those quick moments. And I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you when you're, even when you're doing stuff for, for the church, when you're working online and you're on, there are those moments when something shows up and you got to go, there's a decision that's got to be made. And so to say, when we say the men that struggle with this, we're talking to all of our guys and going, Hey, if you're struggling with this, you're not isolated. You're not alone. <laughs> this is something that um, from the beginning of time, David, you know, David had his first, uh, you know, when he was supposed to be somewhere else, David had his moment where he was just looking out the window, just, I mean, he was somewhere he wasn't supposed to be, but he was just looking out the window, just as innocent as it could be. And he caught a glimpse. And then that process started. Can you give me just a little bit of what you talk to men about on how to, how to, cause it's a process, you, the look, and then you start formulating the plan and there's this whole process that goes through it just like any sin. So what are some steps that you tell men that can halt that process? Um, so the first one, I know you talked about accountability. Um, yeah. But again, there's, someone's not always going to be there. And that's the goal is that we have people right. accountable to, but what are some other steps that we can use um, to stop that, 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 that people that men in general can use when that temptation comes to stop that, to go, you know what, this is, do you have anything? Well, one of the things that we try to help the guys understand is their limitations. A lot of guys know what they can stand, what they, the line that they can go to, 
we try to discourage them about even looking at that line. Don't take yourself to the line because chances are when you meet that line, that's when the temptation begins to where you want to say yes or no. And we want to prevent you from getting there. So the things that we implement with them as far as, as protecting themselves uh, is really look at your mindset. What are you thinking? What, what's going on yeah. in your head? Uh, uh, the enemy wants to attack you in the head because that's where it all begins. It's, it begins in the brain. And when these guys allow thoughts and, and, and fantasies and things of that nature about other people, uh, women, uh, fantasies, things of that nature, you're allowing the enemy the, the authority and access to warp your thinking. And uh, we try to discourage that. We try to uh, invite these guys to make phone calls, get into your word, uh, study, pray. You know, we, we, we sure. mention a lot of things. Yeah. Um, one of the things, again, this is just uh, uh, from, a, from a note, I haven't done this for a long time. Um, as a youth pastor and even as a, as a pastor with men, anytime I talk to guys, there's so many times that um, – men fall to the same thing and they don't understand why they keep on falling. Cause that again, to be real clear, having a relationship with Jesus right. doesn't stop the temptation. Jesus had the best relationship with Jesus he could have had. And he was still tempted, right? He had the best relationship with God. He was a son of God. He knew who he was. There was no one that, that had more of an understanding of his destiny of who he actually was in, in God than Jesus. And even he was tempted. And so, so a lot of times guys are like, well, what do I do? And, and one of the things I've always, I tell men, you know, anyone actually that in any area is, is that there are some places where when you go there, you're not going to win. Those are battlegrounds that, um, you know, that are bad places. There's a, the, there's a, a pass in the Peloponnesian war where um, there was just a few men that were guarding this pass. And they had to, to hold, and there's a huge army coming, and they got in the strategic place where um, there was a very small place for them to pass through. And so this huge army that could easily defeat them, but they had to pass through a small place where there was no win. And so this very small army defeated this huge, powerful army, and they couldn't, I mean, and because they had to go through this pass, and it was just, and so one of the things I tell people is, man, you've got the resources of the kingdom of heaven around mm -hmm. you. You have, there, you're in a no lose situation. However, you can put yourself in that little valley where no matter how strong you're, um, the, the, again, I don't want to be clear, where, where, you, where you just almost can't win these areas of these no-win battlegrounds um, where you're fighting against processes that God actually put in place. I mean, God put, you know, the desire for sex in us and he put it in there strong for a reason because otherwise, how else would we procreate? How else would God, would we have that relationship with, you know, um, and, and so sometimes we as men are foolish and we start the ball rolling right. and we're, we're, we're fighting against God. It's like, it's the, the drive for sex is a God's drive. And when you fight against that, there's, I mean, you just can't, you can't fight against a God process. And, and so one of the things I tell guys all the time is don't put yourself in a place where you're fighting against the natural, uh, you know, and on top of that, you're the, the addictions and the things that we allow the enemy to have place in. And so, um, just remove a battleground. And so, Man, so many times, especially in this, in this, and it's harder during this quarantine, but, and we can just remove a battleground. Maybe it's a show that looks really good, but it's TVMA for a reason. And it may not be full of sexual stuff, but those glimpses, those moments can kind of start that process. And, and I, that's you know, all it takes. That's all it absolutely. takes. Absolutely. Um, and so even during this quarantine, what you're watching, what you're seeing, um, and again, it's really hard because um, when you start asking people for uh, suggestions on what to watch, <laughs> they're giving you stuff you can watch and they're, oh, this is a great show. And it probably is a great show, but the content inside of it, yeah, man. That's, you know, John, that's, that's one of the things that we encourage the guys to do is know your limitations, as I mentioned earlier, but then you said something that's very critical to the entire recovery process, and that is accountability. Now, when you yeah. know what your limitations are, you know what you can do, that line that you cannot cross, that's why you have that group of men in your small group that you can go to, that you can call, that you can say, hey, look, man, I'm at home by myself. My wife and kids just left. Man, I'm having thoughts of calling somebody or getting on the computer or getting a, getting a video uh, console and doing this, but I don't want to do it. You know, That's where those guys in their group come in and say, hey, don't do it. 
let's pray. Let's ask God for healing. Let's, you know, so we have that. And that's what really works, that community. Uh, it's, and it's, uh, again, uh, one of the things we're focusing on, which I, when, when I'm going to hear in a second when we're done kind of doing the interview, I'm going to remind our guys about one of the things we're starting to do just as a group, as, as man up. One of the things God's given us at the beginning of the year is we do small groups, which are 15, 20. We have some, several small groups that have a lot of guys. But one of the things God's really been placing on my heart is these groups of three and four men that are coming together that are just meeting once or a couple times a week, even, and, and even outside of your class where you would say it's a sexual addiction. Um, everyone has the temptations and they're not just with that, their financials, their worry, their worry uh, temptations are all kinds of temptations that we face as men, anger, right. um, you know, alcohol, just, there's all kinds, but having three or four guys that you are connected with, um, oh, that it's you, cr it's crucial. It's and, crucial. And Jesus, think about this. Jesus knew the importance of having three or four men, like a small group of men that he was with, like the, some of the greatest moments in Jesus' life, his most, his greatest spiritual and his greatest spiritual high on the transfiguration. He had Peter, James, and John. They were right there with him. He brought that group. And so they have this spiritual milestone. And then in one of his worst moments, one of the moments when he was tempted to quit, tempted to give up when in his, one of his worst moments, what did he have? He had those three guys, Peter, James, and John. He said, watch and pray. And, and he, Jesus did it. Jesus, we're no better than Jesus. <laughs> I always, I always said that the very first support group was the disciples. Absolutely. And again, there was the group of 12, but all 12 of them weren't the, weren't the, weren't the ones that he was connected with. He exactly. had those three or four that were his rock solid. Exactly. Um, and they weren't any, here's the cool thing. They weren't any more spiritual than Jesus. Jesus could have done this. You know, if anyone could have done it alone, it was Jesus, but he understood, again, part of it was training the disciples, but part of it was understanding because he even got on the disciples. When they fell asleep, he felt it. Like when they weren't with him, he felt it. He said, guys, couldn't you have watched and prayed with me for just one hour? Don't you understand what's going on right now? Couldn't you have just, and there's that prayer support that we yeah. haven't even touched yet. Exactly he, what we man, do on Monday four guys, night. Yeah, man, that's great. I love it. Um, and again, this is something that God has kind of put in the man up that we're starting to implement. I don't know if you know this or not, but we have a, we have an actual Facebook group um, that's separate from this Facebook page that we're going to broadcast this on. It's called man up TC. Um, and that's where all of our small groups are going to be going through every morning. I'm doing a, a, a devotional, but it's also a place for people to get involved in these groups of three or four. Um, um, so tell me this, let's say someone is saying, you know what, I'm struggling. Uh, and it's, it's, it's to the point of, we're almost to the point of a sexual addiction or, you know, that, that, the sexual, um, what's the, I'm sorry, integrity mm -hmm. the issue. Um, how would they get connected with you guys? Give, can, can we get, um, would it be the Trinity church website? Would it be, is there a, is there you a can website? Go, or a, you can go to the Trinity website under, okay. under groups. You can also go to our, uh, website at men of redemption, uh, dot wordpress.com, which will take you to our, okay. our webpage. For our blogs and men of redemption dot wordpress dot wordpress dot com yeah wordpress dot com uh, okay. you can also contact me uh, personally I prefer that because I I need to have that one on one interview to find out exactly where you're at and that's okay. very crucial to the orientation process because yeah. I need to know what it is that you're looking for and what it is that you want to have happen that's awesome well um, again I think that. Again, the reason I interviewed you is because I really feel like it's something right now, even especially right now, that it's probably just a little bit more, even more important because um, we don't know what the future is going to hold. I mean, they're going to open some things up, but, but things are still going to be different. It's just going to, and so this is not going to be something that's going to go right away. And I really feel like it's this a is new normal. The new yeah. Normal. Um, will you do me a favor? Um, would yes, you, can we, can we just end this time with you, with you uh, praying over the men of Trinity Church, uh, the, the men of Manna? Um, and just pray a blessing over them and, and just, can you, can you do that for us? Most definitely. Most definitely. Father God, in Jesus name, we just thank you and praise you. Father, you know, the hearts and the desires of every man in our church and, and, and all throughout the world, Father. And I just pray that you open those hearts yes. and let those wounds and those, those, that trauma be healed in the name of Jesus, Father, help them understand and identify who they are in you 
because that's so crucial to life itself is knowing our identity in you. And I ask you, yes. Father, to just touch them and give them strength, ability, and endurance to, to just do what is asked of them to do and to be merciful and, and, and diligent in seeking the help that they need, Father. Open their, their minds and their thoughts, Father, for purity and wholeness and freedom. And I just thank you and I praise you and I know what you're getting ready to do and we receive it right now and give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Ernie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to get that information out there probably under this. I'm going to have all that information. If you could uh, send that to us, we're going to make sure that people can get a hold of you, email address and all that stuff. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to, I just want to say uh, again, thank you to Ernie for joining us and um, man of God, I want to, I want to let you know this right now that, um, that you have a destiny in Jesus, uh, that man up is more than just a little phrase. Man up is, is a group of men that want you, uh, that want to help you to reach the potential that God has given you. And, and we're doing again, uh, the sh things like this is there's going to be, uh, moments that we're going to give you so that you can connect more. Um, again, I don't know what the new normal is. I don't know what man up is going to look like in the future, but if you're looking to be a man of God, if you're looking to connect with other men of God, I'd love for you to, to connect with the man up Facebook page. We also, like I said, we have a Facebook group that's going to, that's up there um, on the man up Facebook page. All that in, in, invite information is going to be there as well. Um, so that you can connect with the men of God. Um, just men's ministry is important. And so we just want you to be part of it. Um, don't forget, don't miss this Thursday. So this is going to be every Tuesday and every Thursday. Don't miss this Thursday as I meet with, uh, we're going to have our guest, Pastor Danny Martinez from Explicit Youth Ministry at Trinity Church and Pastor Robert Madu. He's a nationwide and worldwide evangelist. Um, they're going to be talking about what the unique challenges of staying at home with small children uh, during this time. And, and how do you keep your fire for the Lord? And how do you keep focus and all those things um, when, you have, when you're at home with kids and you weren't normally? Um, and so we're going to do that. And God bless you and the Lord bless you and keep you and uh, look, I sound like Pastor Hennessy and I'll cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And now let me say what I want you to say. You are a man of God. You were called to be a man of God and there is a destiny for your life. Um, reach it. God's got it for you. Thank you so much for joining us and we appreciate it. Bye.